It's 2017 and Old Time Radio DVD is still here. Check out our new customer ownership program and the lowest prices ever. Just go to oldtimeradiodvd.com for full information about this wonderful program. Don't forget our new program, 123 Ready TV. Folks, this is really a great app for Android and Windows phones, computers, and tablets. And it's only $19.99. In the near future, we will be adding a new computer component to it old time radio it's a great product for 2017 visit oldtimeradiodvd.com today place your order you'll be glad you did the makers of grape nuts bring you the first in this series of guest stars during the vacation of George Burns and Gracie Allen tonight we present Bob Burns with Tony Martin Ray Noble and his orchestra, and yours truly, John Carney. All right, Ray. One, two. Ladies and gentlemen, as my first official act on the Great Nuts program, I should like to present that celebrated spinner of tall yarns who will lead off our guest star list while George Burns and Gracie Allen are vacationing in New York. I take great pleasure in presenting that that uh, one and only comedian, that great star of radio, stage, and screen, that... Oh, pardon me, Mr. Carney. Uh, uh, I'm you, uh, Tony sir. Martin. Don't you think I ought to introduce our guest star? After all, you're new to the program. Well, all right, Mr. Martin. You go right ahead. Well, thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to present to you that hillbilly comedian and musician. That's Stokowski of the Bazooka. I say, old boy. Uh, Yes, Ray. I know it isn't cricket to pop in on you this way, but I do feel that the pleasure of presenting the distinguished Scottish poet should be mine. After all, I've read all his works. Scotch poet? Ray, who do you think this man is? Well, Robert Burns, of course. Didn't you ever hear of Annie Laurie? (laughs) (laughs) Certainly I've heard of Annie Laurie. What's Annie Laurie got to do with this? Oh, nothing. I'm just wondering what she's doing tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it looks like there's only one way to get this show started. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present... Uh, No, uh, allow me. On the contrary, allow me. Well, come on, let's all do it. Okay. Righto. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the first citizen of Van Buren, Arkansas, Bob Burns. I want to thank you boys for that introduction. You've done a mighty good job there, but you boys can go now. Well, don't you want us to stay here with you, Bob, and help you? No, no, boys. This means too much to me to be here tonight, and I don't feel like sharing my glory with three stooges. (laughs) 
You know, I want to tell you people that it took me a long time to get here, and, and I've worked awfully hard to get this far. I started out in the East on a program that advertises yeast, and I worked my way up. <laughs> I, I finally, finally got on a program out here that I've been on for a long time now, it advertises cheese, crooners, and racehorses. <laughs> but, but in my heart, I always dreamed of someday getting on a program that advertises grape nuts. A and here I am at last, and I want you people to gaze upon me now in the hour of my triumph. <laughs> well, I want to thank you people for that applause. That's just about as much as I dreamed I'd get. <laughs> now then, I figured that one reason I wanted to get over here it was because it might give me a chance to talk a little bit. You know, over in the music hall, we have so many of them guest artists over there and, and opera stars and moving picture actors that they keep interrupting me all the time. And I figured it'd be kind of nice to get over on this program where they ain't got no talent at all. <laughs> oh, uh, pardon me, Bob, but I'm Tony Martin. Well, now, I've got some pretty Tony kin folks myself, but they don't look like you. <laughs> well, I know you're not familiar with the way this show is run, but I thought I ought to tell you that I'm supposed to sing a song along about now. Oh, Tony, that's a shame, you know. You're in the wrong end of the business. You ought to be in pictures. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Well, now, I don't know what in the world these movie scouts are looking for if you ain't the ticket. Boy, I'm telling you, with that nice, curly, wavy hair you got there, it, it sure is pretty. And you got them broad shoulders. And, and just look at them hips. <laughs> Boy, I want to tell you, you are a beautiful animal. <laughs> Well, thank you, Bob. It must be the suit. Well, now, that is a right pretty suit you got on there. You know, I've often wondered what Crosby does with his old clothes. <laughs> I saw you last night and got that old feeling When you came in sight I got that old feeling The moment that you danced by I felt a thrill And when you caught my eye My heart so still Once again I seem to feel that old yearning And I knew the the love was still burning. There'll be no new romance for me. It's foolish to start for that old feeling. It's still in my heart. Last night I started out happy. Last night my heart was so gay. Last night I found myself dancing in my favorite cabaret. You were completely forgotten. You were just an affair of the past. And suddenly something happened to me. And I saw my heart beating all so Once again I see you feel that old, old feeling, and I knew the thought of love was still burning. There'll never be a new romance for me. It's foolish to Yes, 
sir, that was that old feeling sung by Tony Martin. And I want to tell you it sure was pretty, Tony. Thanks, Bob. And I want to apologize for what I said a while ago, you know, about you interrupting. It ain't my fault. It's just that I come from a family of people that don't like to be interrupted. Now, now I was just thinking about my Uncle Fudd. There, there's a man that don't bother nobody, and he don't want anybody to bother him. And I'll never forget the time we were sitting out under the shade of a tree one time, and we'd been sitting there for about two hours, and neither one of us had said a word. And finally I looked up, and I saw a hornet on his coat collar. And in a quiet voice, I said, Hey. And he sat there for 15 minutes, and finally he looked at me, and he says, If you don't quit that blabbing, I'm going in. <laughs> well, I says, I just wanted to tell you you got a hornet on your coat collar. And he says, well, I didn't bother you, and for the last hour and a half, you've been practically sitting on a rattlesnake. <laughs> you know, that, that's one reason I wanted to get over on this show tonight. I just figured it would be nice and quiet. At least I thought it would be quiet now that the noisy element is in New York. But, you know, I'll tell you, when George and Gracie are on this show, I believe it is the noisiest show on the air today. The only quiet spots in the show is right after they pull the gay. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Byrne. Yes, Ray. I hope you won't think I'm presumptuous. I, I've never asked a moving picture star before, but uh, could you tell me what time it is? Well, yes, Ray, it's 7.45. Oh, thanks so much. Was that today or tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Doggone it, there's somebody knocking on the door. You know, I was kind of hope we wouldn't get all them raps tonight. Well, you can't have too many raps on a chilly night like this, do you think? <laughs> well, Ray, will you see who that is? You know, that's one feature I've noticed they got on this show. Every time the show gets dull, they have somebody knock on the door. <laughs> I declare, I bet some evenings they wear out two doors over here. Uh, who is it, Ray? Well, it's a gentleman who says he wants to see you about some financial losses he's had. What does he look like? Well, he's very thin and shabby looking, and his trousers are dreadfully frayed. Well, now, I'm awfully sorry for the man, but there ain't a thing in the world I can do. I can't help it if he insists on betting on Bing's horses. <laughs> I declare, you know, it, it, that's, of course, that's a kind of a bum gag, but, but Bing is used to bum plugs like this. <laughs> but, I just said that so you'll know this is the right show. Pardon me for running in so quick, Mr. Burns, but he'd got so dull I thought I'd better not take time to knock. Well, now, who in the world are you? My name's Maisie Allen. Allen? Well, now, this wouldn't happen again in a thousand years. Her name's Allen. I was just thinking what a good t a name that would be for a team, Burns and Allen. Well, they've already got a team named Burns and Allen. Yeah, but they'll be gone four weeks. Nobody's going to remember them that long. <laughs> well, now, that's what I want to see you about. You know, down home, everybody tells me I'm just another Gracie Allen. Well, now, come to think of it, you do talk exactly like Gracie does. <laughs> you know, and I figured if I can do George Burns just a, a little bit, uh, people won't miss him at all. <laughs> well, I'll do my part. Well, now, let's get going. Well, now, uh... <laughs> now, Maisie, uh, why did you leave home? Well... <laughs> I left home on account I got two fellers in love with me, and I don't know which one of them to marry. <laughs> They're just exactly alike, except one has got fallen arches and the other has got fallen hair. Yeah, well, outside of that, they're exactly alike. <laughs> yep, except one raises hen eggs and the other raises owl eggs. Well, at least they're in the same business. Yep, except when a hen lays eggs, she's proud of it, and she cackles. Well, now, tell me about the owls. Uh, can't you tell feather they've laid a knot? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't make any sound at all. <laughs> the owls just don't give a hoot. <laughs> Why does this have to happen to me? 
Well, any who, Bob the Wob, you <laughs> ain't told me which one of them fellers I'd order to marry. <laughs> well, now, I believe if I was you, I'd marry the fellow with the falling hair. Why? Well, you can see he's coming out on top. <laughs> I don't get it. Hey, Ray. just can't express myself. I, I don't know anything in the world I could say about your music that hasn't already been said. You know, I remember one time down home, we was listening over the radio, and you was playing one of them pieces like that, and when you got through, I turned to Grandpa Snazzy, and, and I says, I says, well, Grandpa, what do you think of it? And he says, boy, I haven't heard anything like that since a carload of empty milk cans ran into a truckload of live ducks. Thanks for the compliment, old man. Oh, the, he thanks me. Now, I want to tell you that that, Ray, there is a polite man. There is a gentleman. And, and I, bought, I bet you, I bet he's got noble blood in his face. <laughs> You know, I've often wondered if that ain't what's the matter with my kin folks down home, the men folks. They just ain't got no culture. They're always doing and saying things they shouldn't, and that's the only thing in the world that keeps us out of the 400 back there in Van Buren. We got a 400 in Van Buren. That leaves about 127 of us that ain't doing so good. <laughs> Uh, the women folks, they, they, they're social climbers, and they'd like to get in society back in Van Buren, but, but every time they get a little ways up the social ladder, one of the men folks does something uncouth, and down we go again. <laughs> I'll never forget the time this society lady back there invited my Uncle Uni and my Aunt Boo. 
<laughs> to her house for, for a dinner party. And the parlor was all full of people when Uncle Uni and Aunt Boo got there. And this, uh, this society lady was playing the piano, just running her fingers idly over the keys. And she turned to Uncle Uni when they come in, and she says, Would you like to have a sonata before dinner? And he says, Well, I had a couple on the way over, but I could stand another one. <laughs> I don't see, I don't see why in the world my, my men folks don't either keep their mouths shut or stay in the background. Now here it was at that party, the place was full of people, and, and do you think he took one of them chairs that was sitting around the edge of the parlor? No sir, he plunked himself down in a chair right in the middle of the parlor, and there he sat, you know, with his trousers pulled up with one red sock and one green one. And one of them society ladies sat there and stared at him through her lorgnettes for a long time at them socks, and she says, My, that's a novel pair of socks you have on, one red one and one green one. And he says, Yes, ma'am, and I got another pair at home just like them. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never forget when the butler come to the door and told him dinner was ready. That's all Uncle Uni needed. He made a dash for the dining room table... And he knocked people over, and he got to the table just in time to ease into a chair, just as the lady was starting to sit down in it. <laughs> and this lady, she had the lorgnette, too. She looked at him and says, that's awfully rude to take the chair away from a lady. And he says, I didn't take it away from your sister. I beat you to it fair and square. <laughs> And he did, too. I will say that for him. He... <laughs> if anything, she had a head start on him. But, but it, was, it was at the table when the conversation started that Uncle Uni really done himself proud. The husband of this society lady was talking about his social activities, and he was one of them playboys down there. He belongs to the Hard Scrapple Country Club at Fort Smith. And, and he was telling about his social activities, and he says, Sunday, he says, I motored to the golf club, and I golfed till sundown, and then I motored to town, and I dined, and then I danced till daylight. And Uncle Uni says, well, I've been having quite a time myself. He says, Monday, I, I mule to the cornfield. And he says, I jee-hawed till sundown. Then I, I mule home again. And then I suffered till dark and a pipe till nine. And then a bed steaded till daylight. <laughs> and then he says, I breakfasted till it was time to go muling again. <laughs> now then, tonight, I, I'll never forget what my aunt used to tell him. Tell Uncle Uni every time he went to a party and disgraced her like that, I'm going to play a song using almost the exact words. She used to say, Uni, how come you do me like you do, do, do? Will you play that, Ray, please? <laughs> Now, Tony, how about you doing another song? Look like these people stand for pretty near anything. <laughs> All right, Bob, I'd like to sing Remember Me. Well, you better sing it pretty. They forget you mighty quick in this business. Do you remember one September afternoon? I stood with you and listened to a wedding tune. And didn't I go with you on your honeymoon? Remember me. Do you recall a cottage small upon a hill? Where every day I had to pay another bill. And if I'm not mistaken, do I pay them still? Remember me. 
picture, Life Begins in College. about that? What are you laughing at? <laughs> it's probably one of their jokes. Oh, a joke. Oh. <laughs> I don't get it. Be with us again next week at the same time over these same stations when the makers of Grape Nuts bring you another of the noted stars who are appearing on this program during the vacation of Burns and Allen. Next week, our guest will be that famous comedian of stage, screen, and radio, Phil Baker. Be sure to listen in. This is John Conti saying good night for the makers of Great Night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.